Hey everyone, it's Delaney, Senior Inbound Marketing Specialist at Hive House Digital. Today, I'm going to show you how to use the Campaigns tool in HubSpot. Now, this is a pretty large tool, and it's kind of embedded into other tools in HubSpot. For example, in an email, you can assign in the campaign, same with social posts and other aspects of the tool. Today, we're just going to focus on the campaign tool itself and how you can create a campaign within the tool. So first, you're going to go to Marketing and then Campaigns from the drop-down menu. Here, you're on your Manage tab of the campaigns, and you can see all of the different campaigns that you have created. Now, we're in our test portal, so there's not much going on here, but it will still give you an idea of how the tool works. So by default, you're going to see all of the campaigns. You also have these tabs for campaigns starting this quarter, as well as recently created campaigns. If you go to the All Campaigns and add Advanced Filters, you could save additional views. For example, if you click Advanced Filters, click Add Filter, you can use these properties and create a new view. For, so for example, maybe you want to have a view of all campaigns that have ad campaigns. So we're going to click on that. We're going to say it's greater than or equal to one. Click Apply Filter, and now we don't have any that have an associated ad campaign, but if we did, they would show up here. And if we wanted to save that view, we could go ahead and click Save View, Save as New. We're going to name it, so we'll say Add Campaigns. You can choose to keep it private or share with everyone. Click Save, and we now have that view saved in our HubSpot account. I'm going to go back to All Campaigns and clear our filters. And I'm going to show you just a few other tools before we get into creating a campaign in HubSpot and using the tools. So you have your calendar view, which is going to show your campaigns on a calendar level. So you can see we have this random test campaign, but then the delight survey feedback campaign starts on February 1st. So it's just a visual way to look at your campaigns. Next, we have the tasks tab, which is going to show you the tasks associated with campaigns. And uh, if you want more information on tasks, we will link our tech tip on that topic down below. So now let's go over how you can create a campaign in HubSpot. And like with most things in HubSpot, when you're going to create something new, you're going to find that orange create button in the right hand corner. Click on create campaign. You can choose if you want to start from scratch or start from a template. For the purposes of this tutorial, we're going to start from scratch. I'm going to click next and we're going to start filling out our campaign. If you want to modify how this form looks like you would with contacts or creating deals, you can click on edit this form and modify it. You can see the properties on the side. Now we have all of the campaign information properties already loaded in, but if you wanted to remove or add something, you could do that here. Um, so I'm going to start out with the campaign name. Now I would follow your company's naming conventions that you use in HubSpot. Uh, for this one, we're going to say it's a top of funnel campaign, so tofu, and we'll call this tech tip example. Next, you can choose a campaign color. You can see right here we have some that are color coded orange and one with green. You could maybe do that based on the uh, funnel stage or some, you know, maybe you're focusing on one service over the other. Uh, let's say top of funnel, we uh, classify that as blue. We can do that. If you have business units in HubSpot, you can uh, assign it to the correct business unit here. You also have the campaign owner. You could leave it no owner. Um, that, that might be helpful if you have multiple people owning the campaign, or maybe you have one specific person who's the campaign owner. You could choose that person. It's really up to you and how you want to create your campaigns and assign ownership. Uh, then you have the campaign start date. So let's say for this one, we want to have it start February 1st. And it will go on for three months, so February, March, April, end of April. And then you can add your campaign goal to attract new visitors to the website. Uh, then you can add your campaign audience, any campaign notes that would be helpful, and then add your campaign status. So since this is just getting started, we'll say it's planned, and then we'll click Create. And that will bring you to the campaign tool for that specific campaign. Um, on the left sidebar, you have your sidebar, uh, the actions drop down will give you some different actions you can take, like editing the campaign, editing goals, creating a tracking URL, creating a task, compare campaign, comment, manage access, and delete. Um, you also have a button for cloning the campaign and adding assets. So let's say you want to add an asset here. Um, 
there's not much going on in this HubSpot account, but let's say you had a blog post. We're going to just say this one is a top of funnel blog post. You can click on it and click save. And that is now an asset associated with the campaign. You can see it just loaded here. And there's different areas you can view assets as well. For example, this assets tab in the sidebar, you can view all assets here. And when I go to blog posts, it shows up here and I can hover over it and get a sample of it. Going back to details, you have the information you just filled out on the campaign creation form. And if you scroll down, you can see that you can edit it. So for example, I didn't fill out a campaign audience. I could add that later. Uh, and then it'll also take a look at your campaign budget and spend, uh, which we'll get to later in the video. Now it defaulted to the assets page, but I'm gonna go to performance to start out with. This is gonna show you the general performance of your campaign. You have some filtering here for date range as well as contact attribution if you wanna look at the first touch or last touch. Uh, you can look at the overview for sessions, new contacts and influence contacts. You have revenue attribution. Now this may be limited depending on the subscription level you have, so keep that in mind. You can also add filters for you know the attribution model you want to use. You also have this chart for new contacts, which can be uh, updated to show influence contacts and sessions, depending on what you want to see. And then at the bottom, it will collect performance for all the different assets that you are um, attributing to this campaign. So right now we just have a blog post and it would show us data for contacts, first and last touch, as well as submissions and views. So as you add assets, they will be added to this performance page. Next, you have an attribution tab, and this is going to show you attribution for your campaign. Uh, so you have an attribution model you can pick, you have your date range, and then if you want to see the charts based on contacts created, deals created, and revenue. So there's different charts for each of these, but you can see your contacts. You have asset type by contacts created, assets by contacts created, interaction source by contacts created, interaction type by contacts created, uh, and so on. You also have the same for deals created. And then you have the revenue tab, which will show you assets by revenue type, assets by revenue, interaction source by revenue, interaction type by revenue, deals by revenue. Um, and those are the different charts you can look at here. So then you have the assets tab, which shows you all of the assets that are associated with the campaign. Right now, we just have a blog post, but as you assign emails a campaign, it'll show up here as you assign you know, maybe a landing page, it'll show up here. If you have an ad campaign, you can show, it'll show up here. So um, it's really just a central hub for looking at all of the associated asset. And when you click on it, you can edit it as well as view the performance, view the details, remove campaign, comment, et cetera. So it's just a really great place to have everything in one, one spot. Then you have tasks, which again, we will link our tech tip down below to go more in detail about using the tasks tool. Um, and finally, we have the budget tab, which has two sections, your campaign budget and your campaign spend. Of course, the budget is how much you have to spend on this campaign, and then the spend is how much you spend. So to create a campaign budget, you can click on one of these two create budget item buttons, and then you can just list out the budget for each sub budget, I guess, you have. So for example, you have an ad spend, let's say... You have $3,000 to work with for the entire campaign. You could save that there. Um, let's say you have a freelance budget. Maybe you are hiring um, some freelancers to write blog posts for you. You can create a budget item for that. We'll just call it freelance. And let's say you have a $3,000 budget for that as well. Any other budget you need to add to your campaign, you can add that here, but we're going to leave it here for now. Now you can track your campaign spend. So you can create a spend item. And let's say this is February ad spend. And we'll say we spent $970.32 for your February ad spend. You can click save. And that will now show that you spent $972. And it will tell you the remaining budget you have for the campaign. So let's say you had one blog post written. Um, we'll say blog post number one. And let's just say, I'm just going to do a round number this time. I'll say you spent $1,000 on it. Uh, you can now see that you spent a total of $1,972.32. 
And then you have a remaining budget of just over $4,000. So this is just a way to have a, another look at your campaign spend. It's all in one place. All of your assets, all of your performance, all of your budget items is in one place. So it's a really, really helpful tool for you to use when you are creating these campaigns. So that's it. That's how you use the campaigns tool in HubSpot. Uh, this is how you create a campaign and kind of manage it in the campaigns tool. Like I said, when you're creating an email or creating a blog post um, or creating a workflow, you can assign it a campaign. Um, it's pretty intuitive when you're in those tools. Um, one topic of campaigns that we didn't go over that could really be a whole other video in itself is going over analytics which you can access by going to marketing campaigns, clicking analyze, and then you can either compa compare campaigns or go to the campaign analytics tab. And this will give you a um, more broad look at your campaigns and then you could go within those different campaigns. So that's really a topic for another video. Um, and that is all we have for you today. I hope you learned something new and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on our next tech tip.